come out on the HQ. Collingwood's... A day of remembrance. A day that recalls what it means not to let your mates down. on Fox Sports. Thank you for joining us for the seventh meeting on Anzac Day between the Roosters and the Dragons being brought to you live on Fox Sports from ANZ Stadium at Homebush in Sydney. And a good crowd building up still for this one as the sun breaks out. A rare sight in the last fortnight right here in Sydney. And we are not too far away from the official NRL Anzac Day ceremony. For the bands here, and the players not too far away from making their appearance for the first time on this former Olympic Stadium. Let's take a look at both the Dragons and the Roosters as they prepare for this game. It's an enormous game for, of course, the Dragons. Just one win so far in 2008. On the other side of the coin, the Roosters have won four from six, Greg. Yeah, been one of the form teams in the competition, the Sydney Roosters. All, all they disappointing last week and a disappointing second half, and that really did highlight the problem that the Roosters have had so far this year. Their second half performances haven't been up to scratch. They've, they've let a couple of games slip away. They actually led at halftime uh, against the Brisbane Broncos and ended up losing by six. They led by eight against the Newcastle side last week and got hammered in the final ten minutes, so Brad Fittler will want to address that problem here today. Marco Merley missed last Last week's game, he's back in the lineup, and that is really one of the strengths of the Roosters team. Their front row rotation, all front rowers playing terrific football so far this year. There's the Dragon side, of course. Morris, the fullback, Gaznia, and Josh Morris in the centres. A couple of changes with Safi and Scott coming off the bench. Kirk Reynolds and Stuart Webb go back to the bench for the Dragons, and here they are. A massive boost getting Mark Gaznia back, as we mentioned in our pre game show, ahead of schedule from a calf muscle injury. It looked as though he was going to be out for three to four weeks. And, of course, it really boosts his claims for that Australian centre spot if he gets through today OK and plays well. He is, uh, without doubt, of course, uh, an absolute must for the Australian side to take on the Kiwis in a fortnight's time on May 9. Right now, though, let's go down to Andy Raymond once again, who has yet another special guest with him. Yeah, and a great atmosphere starting to build down here. Anthony Minicello joining me desperately disappointed to be missing out tonight. Yeah, I've, I've missed out on the last couple of years uh, of this big clash. You know, it's, uh, it's a great day to be involved in. Uh, you know, it's a day that we honour the diggers and, and uh, it's good to be a part of, you know. It's just a shame that I'm not playing. How is the back? It's going all right. Yeah, uh, the plan is to come back for the camera game, which will be after the bye. Uh, I'll get a better indication next week when I have a run, so uh, that's the aim at the moment. What type of pain is it? Is it a constant pain? Is it a sharp pain at times? Something you're just learning to live with? Uh, yeah, I've got a, obviously got to manage it because I've got a history history down in my lower back. But uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, a sharp pain. It was uh, constant, but at the moment, it's uh, it's uh, gone. So um, once I do have a run, it will give me uh, a better indication how I pull up the next day and and uh, what's happening down there. How are the boys? What's the dressing room like? Do you get a, a feel before a game if the side switched on or, or not? Yeah, you do get a feel. You know, some days uh, everyone's a bit jovial and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, when being down there this, uh, this morning and, and this afternoon, the boys are pretty quiet. So, uh, you yeah, know, that means it's, uh, 
It's only probably a bit fiery, and you now you can see the forwards just get revving up, especially Marco Mealy, so it's exciting. The Anzac ceremony not far away now, and it's something the players genuinely love and they genuinely get motivated and emotional by? Oh, definitely, especially when you hear the last post. You know, it's uh, it's an emotional uh, a song, if you can call it that. Um, you know, the players do get pumped up, and the, the anthem and all that sort of stuff. So uh, the, the good atmosphere by the, the fans that turn out today. So it's uh, it's always an exciting match every year. Enjoy your afternoon. Can't wait to see you back on the footy field in a couple of weeks, mate. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, mate. Well, those Roosters fans here today would love to see him back in the fullback role, of course, and he may not be too far away from the sounds of things. Shame to see such a terrific player having such issues continually with the back problem. Robbie Farrer, of course, the West Tiger himself, struggling with a similar complaint at the moment, but he may well be back for the Tigers on Sunday against the Sharks. The yep. Dragons in the dressing room about to come down the tunnel side by side with their Roosters opponents. They have just one win so far in 2008. That was all the way back in round two when they beat the Gold Coast Titans on Monday Night Football, 30 points to 12. But outside of that, it has been a season of abject misery for those Dragons fans. Losses to the Tigers, the Raiders, the Sharks, the Cowboys. And of course, most recently last week, the Bulldogs were able to get them 30 points to 18. The Roosters, well, their season, terrific start once again for them. Their best start to a season since 2004 when they also went 4-2 and two in the first six games of the season. They started with a win against the Rabbitohs right here. A game, of course, notable for the injury to Craig Wing. They lost to the Broncos in a terrific game on Friday night football, but they've racked up wins since against the Storm, the Bulldogs, and also the Panthers before going down last week to the Newcastle Knights. They make their way onto Wayne's Ed Stadium. The Roosters wearing the sky blue jersey they wore during the second war. And due to an ink shortage, a lack of dark blue dye in fact they played in a lighter colored strip and here on anzac day once again in this centenary rugby league season they will wear the sky blue color they wore back in the second world war in the early 40s they will line up either side of the podium here three wins apiece on anzac day for the dragons and also the roosters mark gaznia back a huge bonus for the Dragons. Dan Hunt and some of the younger players getting ready for what is an enormous occasion, no matter what the situation as far as the teams are concerned. They come in with a 1-5 and five record, and right now we will take you down to the official NRL Anzac Day ceremony and the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, as we pay tribute to our service men, past and present, please be upstanding for the national anthem performed today by the Sydney Detachment of the Royal Australian Navy Band and vocalist, Abel Seaman Damien Dowd. City Detachment of the Royal Australian Navy Band and Navy vocalist Damien Dowd. Would you please remain upstanding for the Anzac Day Ode, read today by the State President of the New South Wales RSL, Mr Don Rowe. 
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Ladies and gentlemen, please respect a moment's silence. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank our bugler today, Navy musician Marcus Saloni, and our official party as they leave the stage, Bill Collier, war veteran and former St George player Ferris Ashton, war veteran and former Eastern Suburbs rugby league legend Don Rowe, state president of the New South Wales RSL, and our Navy musicians Abel Seaman Damien Dowd and also Abel Seaman Marcus Saloni. The sound of the FA-18 flying over the top of Homebush here in Sydney's inner western suburbs. Flight Lieutenant Grant Taylor gave everybody a start as he went over the top very, very quickly. A moving ceremony as ever on Anzac Day. What has become tradition now between the Dragons and the Roosters isn't too far away from Taking place for the seventh time, the first time right here at ANZ Stadium. And as we said off the top of the show, Brandy, if you can't fire up to play footy today, you'll never fire up. Anzac Day does invoke a, a passion in us all, and I've got no doubt that's why we've seen some great matches uh, over the past six years. And it doesn't matter what sort of form either side is bringing into it. The Dragons have been in this position before where they've only won one game coming in to the Anzac Day clash. And it really has added to the... The theatre of the match, the closeness, the quality of the football. And I'm sure we're going to get some special moments as we've had in the past here today. We'll see if Brayton Astor, of course, can push his claims for an Australian spot. Darren Lockyer, of course, has to get through tonight's game against the South Sydney Rabbitohs to be able to be fit to play, of course, in a couple of weeks' time. 14 days between now and also the Test match. And Willie Mason, well, he will be a certainty for the Australian team 
terrific game just on three weeks ago now and they took on the Bulldogs right here in round four. What a build-up that was to that game and what a performance it was from Willie Mason. Yeah, he matched all the talk, didn't he? He, he? he spoke about it all week, about the pressure of it, playing his old club, but he matched that against the Bulldogs back in round four. Missed the game against the Panthers the following week, but was a little bit quiet last week, so Willie will be looking for a big one. Jamie Soud, of course, told a couple, well, three or four weeks ago that he was a long-term uh, option at halfback. He was dropped for last week's game. He's back today at 5'8". That just might help his game a little wider, two passes wider. He needs to run the football today. Jamie Soud needs to get involved physically early and take the line on. He's got too much speed for it to be wasted. Jason Riles has shown, well, he can be frustrated in games, but his numbers are very good. He's been leading from the front and taking the ball forward, getting the Dragons, setting the Dragons, a good platform. Mentioned, of course, as we see, Sean Hampstead, our referee for this seventh encounter on Anzac Day between the Dragons and the Roosters. Jason Riles mentioned as a trade, perhaps, deal with Brett Kamali from the Sharks. That has been avoided at the moment, at least, by both clubs. We'll wait and see what happens with that one. We'll wait and see what happens today, right here on Anzac Day. Braith and Asta gets us underway. The kickoff down deep into the in goal area taken by Brett Morris who gives it to Jason Riles who brings it back out towards the 10 and then is driven backwards by a solid defensive line of the Roosters. Nightingale working it up towards the 20 out of dummy half. He'll play it here for Young at hooker today after being their halfback last week. Sauer now wearing the six today takes it forward. Feel some contact early on as Bo Scott works it up out of their own no 20. Ball. He'll play it here just inside the 30. Four okay. plays gone in this first set. Gaznia okay. from dummy half goes a long way before they wrapped him up. Willie Mason was right, called out of the play by the referee. Now Hornby to Sauer to kick from just outside the 40. And that right-hand side of the field. Roberts going back to the in goal area. Good kick first up by Jamie Sauer makes Roberts. Bring it back to the in goal area. That's he one. stopped just inside the oh, 10. Yeah, good confidence start yep. by Jamie Soward. Got involved, took a tackle early, and that's what he needs to do. And off the back of that, a good kick and chase by the Dragons. Oh, and they'll make the, the Roosters work it out of their own yep. end for the first time here at ANZ in this great Anzac Day clash. Three. Move it now. Go on, Dragons, come on. Hold. Oh. Here's okay. O'Mealy playing it for Riley Brown. Fitz Gibbon now as they work it to the middle of the field to. Nate Miles, very much a contender for one of those Australian berths in the test in two weeks' time. He'll play it here to Brown again at the 20. They come to a Nasta. It goes to Tupo. A quiet day last week. Last Sunday. Not that long ago, really. A short preparation, of course, for the Roosters for this game. And now a Nasta, that huge boot of his. The right foot drives it down towards Brett Morris, who fields it at his own 20. So the Dragons... Winning the territorial battle in the first couple of sets at least. They get it back L1. here on the first Moving play out. at their own 40. Yeah, the Roosters did struggle to get out of their own end. Braith and Nasta having to kick inside the 30 there and the the Dragons bring it up L2. just on halfway. Go on, Roosters, after come tackle on. two. Young goes to Hornby. Gives it to Bo Scott who unfortunately for oh, him and the Dragons oh, at times right. is let down by oh, his handling but his leg speed and punch at the line can create some troubles for the opposition defensive line. Here's Cray trying to do exactly that. He'll play it just outside the 30 as Young goes across the face of Porter Riles who has met in a big tackle by Mark O'Mealy. Coming in on the angle, he crunched him at the line of Sow and puts it high in the air. Some pressure here on Perry who goes up for He comes down with it and it's the Dragons who will play from in front on Day. Well, we're going to check it, but what a take by Ben Hornby. Up above Sam Perrett. Perfect kick by Jamie Soud, right on the try line. That's where you want your kicks to land. Check the onside. No problem there. Ben Hornby, the man on the inside of Soud, following that kick through. Both players go for the ball. Hornby able to get up above Perrett and somehow hang on to the ball and plant it down beside the posts. Well, if the ball was down short of the line, 
Well, the first contact with the turf, he didn't have a hand on him at that stage. He was entitled to go again to plant it down. And there was a slight suggestion that perhaps the ball moved in his hand as he planted it down the second time, but that's in slow motion. From what we've seen, we'll see the green lights here. Yeah, no problem there. It, it did look like a bobble, but he got his body over the top of it. The Dragons first on the ball. Did a great job there to hang onto that ball, didn't he? Took the ball, landed awkwardly, landed short, and was just able to improve his position. Terrific bomb by Jamie Soward. Had Perrett thinking about the upright, I'm sure, as he watched the ball come down. He had to know it wasn't too far away from his left-hand side, but he was just outlet by Hornby, who did get up to go there again and put the ball down before Braith and Astor was able to knock it away from him. Good start by the Dragons. Impressive start by this man. Two good kicks. Jamie Soward playing in the sixth role today. After being guaranteed back in round two, he was the long-term yep. halfback. It didn't last that long. He started well today as the Dragon Six, who led the Roosters nil. Yeah, timed it perfectly. Ben Hornby. Sam Perrot always hard. Always hard as a fullback. He tried to take a couple of steps back there just so he could get a little bit of a running leap at the ball, but Hornby just able to get over the top of him. An early four-pointer for that man, Ben Hornby. His second of the season. Give us some confidence after they have lacked so much of it in 2008. Pour it is off the restart, bringing it back out. They meet him at the 10 metre line. A good chase off a deep kickoff by the Roosters to get us back underway. Knight and Gale again, as ever, getting there, taking an early carry from dummy half. He brings it back to the 20 metre line. We'll play it here for Young. Still wearing that covering on the left knee, of course, which has given him so much trouble over the last couple of seasons. Jared Safi beat the first tackle. In fact, Craig Fitzgibbon has been left on the turf behind the players. Young links up with Justin Paul. Brett Morris was there looking for a ball as well. Fitzgibbon is unwell behind the Dragons attacking line. Soward. He comes to Gaznia. Some room to move, but plenty of Roosters defenders there. And he's stopped by Sedamata Sale on this left-hand side. Stanley giving it to Hornby. Hit by Mason as he got the kick in. But it will work out for the Dragons. Just Morris came up with it. Gets the ball to Nightingale. And they're in again. Two tries in five minutes for the Dragons. And it came off a kick, a missed cue kick by the first try scorer, Ben Hornby. Did he kick that across field on purpose or was it a missed cue kick? When we have a look at it, Josh Morris did a great job to catch the ball on the fly. And then offload. Here we go, Ben Hornby under plenty of pressure there. Good chase by Willie Mason. Well, I still don't know. I still don't know whether he meant it or not. He was hit as he kicked the ball, whether that forced it sideways. It worked out perfect. Josh Morris yeah, on the fly, came from nowhere, pushes off Mitchell Pearce, and then Jason Nightingale, the the ground, the who had been involved in a couple of the plays earlier up the field, the scores in the corner, and the Dragons, bang, bang. What a start for them. Coming into this game with just one win for the season. Calls for Nathan Brown's head to relinquish the coaching role immediately. His staff, of course, no, they aren't required for 2009 when Wayne Bennett arrives at Congrep and also Wollongong. And despite all that and the midweek trade rumours, Jason Riles and Brett Kamali, of course, in a supposed deal, here they are. Jamie Sowen trying to convert from the sideline for a 12 points to nil lead. An incredible beginning to this Anzac Day encounter at Homebush. Sowen, full of confidence himself, strikes it well. It's as straight as a dare. Over the black dot it goes. And the Dragons lead the Roosters by an even dozen. Do not adjust your sets. That score is correct. Here it is again, the kick by Hornby. I'm not convinced it was intentional, but boy, it worked out beautifully. It did, and of course, Craig Fitzgibbon, who defends out in the right, was still making his way back towards the try oh, line when that kicker. try was scored. He was still oh, getting up it. off the ground, just walking over halfway as that try was scored. The Roosters down a defensive man, but Jamie Soward kicks the goal from the sideline. That's another big one by the Roosters, and it's too big. 
Jason Nightingale doing very well up against the dead ball line to know exactly where he was. He got the feet out of play, caught the ball on the full. He only had to touch it. And as a result, the Roosters will be marched back into their own 20. The Dragons will come on the attack here once again. Very nicely done. Hornby was there as well. They both had a play at it. Got, them, the, got themselves back there pretty quick so they could go forward. And that's what the, yeah, that's, hold, that was the hold. key to that play. They weren't going backwards when they caught the ball. They got themselves behind the dead ball line and knew exactly where they that were. Now. Well, I'll come at them again here. Safi it is playing it for Young. Going down the short side a long way as well. Now Morris got away from Mitchell Pierce's tackle. Pierce. And already they're inside the Roosters' 10. Looking for a 16-0 scoreline. Riles, a flat ball to Justin Paul. They stop him in front of the uprights, five metres away from the line. Young goes past Riles to give it to Hornby, who almost lost it. He hangs on to it. Oh, Mason rides into the ground heavily. To the line, fellas. Big tackle by the 11. Here's Young going to Riles. Nate Miles is there to finish off that particular tackle. Craig Fitzgibbon seems to be okay after struggling not that long ago. Sour to kick for the corner. Gaznier is out there. So well, the Roosters in number. Sean Kenny yeah. Dow took the ball on the full. Surely he'll dump it back to Anthony Tupo to make a bird of it. But there was no whistle from the referee and will look to be a clean oh, catch by the winger. Well, the only thing I can come up with is that... Uh, uh, John Hampstead must have thought it had come off a Dragons player into oh, Kenny oh, Dow's oh, hand. He did, but he looked like he was a player. He oh, got Dragons. up above everyone. He was the only player that made the take. It was a clean catch by Kenny Dow oh, and the Roosters. Right he had to push the ball out on, the on, back, Dragons, on, which was a dangerous play to get out of the in-goal area. The Roosters robbed of 20 metres. They get a penalty back. right here, but Sean Hampstead at times can be a nervous referee. And sometimes... There's a delay almost in his making decisions on the field, and we saw that right there. It was a clear-cut catch. And they were put under enormous pressure, pressure they shouldn't have been put under the Roosters. Ten Roosters. minutes gone. Oh, it's the Dragons, 12 points to nil. They come on the attack for the first time in the game. Hell one. It's Move been played in their end of the field Dragon so hold, far, hold. and Miles will play it here for Riley Brown. Okay. From just outside the 30-metre line, they turn it back on the inside here for Marco Mealy. Back in the side He's today clear, after missing last week's game against the Knights with a hamstring strain. Pierce goes to Fitzgibbon. A good ball to Perrett, who was nabbed clear, straight man. away by Justin Stop Paul. Off. Good tackle by clear, the front man. rower. 10 metres away, Brown goes in behind Miles. Here's Pierce to Anasta. They came up quickly. Hornby couldn't get to him. Anasta got up to go again. Now he fires it wide. It comes to set him on a sar for the line he goes. They'll drag him in a touch though. Good tackle. Soward got there, so did Chase Stanley. And they drove him over the sideline. Yeah, Dean Young ran 20 metres to pat both of those players on the back. Set him out of sar. Pushed off Chase Stanley originally and looked like he might have a, a lunge at the line, but plenty of defence there. Soward and Morris coming over the top. The Roosters did look dangerous. A couple of good little set plays there. Brayton Acid certainly did well to, after he slipped over to still get the ball out to Saar. Get your head in the scrum. Head in the scrum there. Right Hornby with the scrum feed. They... Take it away from their own 10-metre line with Gaznia working it up towards the 20. Brett Morris at a dummy half, stopped there by Fitzgibbon and also Nate Miles Young. We'll get the dummy half now for Soward. Working on that left-hand side of the field. Play on, play on. No, they grab Young, out of dummy half. A good tackle there made by Mitchell Pierce. Hornby goes to Riles, who shows it at the 40-metre line. They'll kick. From around about the 40 metre line, it's quite heavy in that middle section of the field there after all the rain that's fallen in Sydney this week. An earlier game, of course, the Toyota Cup clash between the same two sides played this afternoon beforehand. The field has handled the traffic pretty well and here's Perrett taking the kick at his own 10 metre line to be stopped there by Cray. Good kick by Jamie Soward out of dummy half, hooked the ball back. Back in field, that forced Perrett to allow it to bounce, and that gave the, the Dragons chase plenty of time to get up there. And the Roosters tackle three just outside their 30 again, having to do it hard. Here's Tupo. Taking them on, he made just 25 metres with the ball under his arm last week against the Newcastle Knights on four carries. He played more than 70 minutes as well. Did a fair bit of defensive work, 39 tackles 
He made for the game as they take it back across the halfway line here, O'Mealy. Or play it for Riley Brown. Anasta with a spiral kick towards the end goal. In fact, it will make the end goal. Morris fighting back. Ritter couldn't come up with it. And a bonus six tackles coming up for the Roosters. That was the ideal time, really, for a fullback to allow the ball to bounce. I know you don't want to allow the ball to bounce, but that... That was always going to be difficult to take. Would have got a 20-metre tap if he took that, but the chase from the Roosters was well back. Wraith and Astra, and that's... You talk about the Roosters scoring tries off kicks, but they put more bombs up than any other team in, in the competition. That one from 45 out and just throwing it up in the air, a big torpedo. He should have let that bounce. It would have gone dead. Here's Miles bringing it back from the goal line dropout to be tackled just outside the 30. A good hit as well. Ben Cray and Jason Riles were there. Here's O'Mealy taking it down the middle. Doesn't seem to be hampered by any carryover of that hamstring strain. He suffered a couple of weeks ago. Now a short ball from Brown to Mason on that right hand side. I'd like to work plays there with Mason in behind Pierce and others at times. Here's Fitzgibbon coming to Pierce now. Joins up with a Nasta. It came to Tupo off the Sharks in 2009. To the line, to the and for the, the moment, line. trying to find a way across the line for the Roosters. Brown it is. Going to Anasta. Will grubber it into the in goal area. It's deep towards the dead ball line. Touched by a dragon. You, didn't it? And referee Sean Hampstead yeah, once right. again unsure of his call here. Waiting for a call and he will rule a goal line dropout. Well, did he just ask Jason Nightingale, did it come off you? I'm sure I know what Nightingale's answer would have been. Here's the kick by Anasta. It was going dead all the time. The Dragons had it well covered. Nightingale, well, it, it came off him. He just got too close to the ball. The decision in the end is right. Certainly came off the chest. Jason Nightingale, but another moment for Sean Hampstead. He's having his troubles in the in-goal area at either end of the field so far today. O'Mealy bringing it back. And Ryan has to come up with a big shoulder charge. O'Mealy absorbed the impact and will play it just outside the 30. Here's Fitzgibbon. Making a solid tackle there. Good hands, though, from Brown to Miles. They keep it alive. Soward makes a tackle on the front row, but he gets up to play it quickly for Riley Brown. Some room for the Roosters to move in. From Anasta back to Tupo. He lost the ball. It came off a dragon and will be a knock-on against the Roosters. The Dragons will have to scrum feed 10 out from their own line. Had a great opportunity, the Roosters there, and came back the short side after a quick play the ball from Nate Miles. They had the Dragons' defence going backwards. The best thing would have just been to go direct at the line, the defensive line, retreating quickly and try and isolate a player. Lock it in, head in, hit him, Willie, lock it around. Two hands, two hands, and get your foot in there. Right, get it in there. It's out. No trouble with that feet. The referee's happy with the way it all went by now. Chase Stanley taking a chance, offloading the ball in the tackle there to Come Dean on, Young. He was right, being Rangers, marched on, back towards his own in goal area. Should have gone very wrong very quickly for the Dragons, but it worked out okay. And now some good hands in the middle of the field as it came to Justin Poor from oh, Ben Hornby. Young waiting. He comes to this right-hand side of the field. Bo Scott. That was a bit of a combination that he struck up with Mark Gasnier in the time that they work on this side of the field. Here's Gasnier being tackled there from behind by Miles with Tupo over the top. Sauer from inside the 40, looking for a 40-20. Good angle on the kick as well. It runs towards the sideline, but Roberts will get back there to cut it off about a metre or so inside that far sideline and gives it to Perrett to be stopped here at his own 10-metre line. Yeah, didn't get the 40 20 that he was looking for, but another good kick from Jamie Soward. Surrender! The Roosters That's having to run a long Max way back to work this, this one out. Here's Anasta. Running towards Soward, then stepping off that left foot to be stopped by okay. Gaznia and also Riles when Jamie Soward has his on days with his kicking game. He can be irresistible. And he has been terrific so far. A couple of kicks, one for a bomb for Ben Hornby to score off. And now a loose ball for Amos Roberts to pick it up. He comes back to the middle of the field. They go through O'Mealy, then Perrett away to Anasta, who goes wide. It's still a good ball to set him on a start. He's got Sean Kenny Dow with him, but he'll take the tackle just outside the 20. 
Kenny down on the last. Didn't realise it at first. Gave it to Anas to put the kick in the air. Not a bad one either, but getting back to make a very good catch was Josh Morris. Under pressure, floating back towards the dead ball, and he made a very good catch. Will ensure the Dragons bring it back out to their own 20. Yeah, Amos Roberts got himself in position, as did Soliola, but Roberts just a little short. Morris doing a great job at the back. Not quite getting the depth of the kick right on that occasion. A little bit off their game so far, the Roosters, perhaps shot by the early here. onslaught on, from St. George Illawarra. Two tries in the opening five minutes. The 12 0 scoreline. Well, they did dominate possession, and we've seen it in the past. The Dragons dominate early possession and, and come up with nothing. This time they made the most of it. Ben Cray finds his way between. The, the defenders, the board, a quick mate. play, the ball onto Justin Poor. It takes it back into Roosters territory. Come on, fellas, come Four on. plays gone in this set of six. Young at dummy half will come back for Hornby. He goes to Gazdia. Stanley on his outside, wearing three, the playing Help on the right that. wing this Play afternoon. They'll have one more come here. We'll see what Sourwood can come up with. It goes to Hornby instead. Under pressure there from Brown coming out of the line. Again, not a great kick from Hornby, but we know what happened last well, time. Taken and dumped out the back. Roberts picks it up, looking for somebody to link up with. He finds Sia Soliola. And off a poor kick by Ben Hornby. This time it does hurt the Dragons. And the Roosters have it back already at the halfway line as Mason takes it up. Always dangerous putting those cross-field kicks across. Especially that's in that position on that part of the field. No one really covering any sort of defence. A, a poor bounce, a bounce into the hands of Amos Roberts. He, he runs 50 to score a try. It had to be a miscue because they've done so well. Kicking towards the corners. Now Tupo bursting under a pass from Brayton after the inside ball. And the stepping of Anthony Tupo will have the Sharks fans smiling. That's next year right now. He scores the Roosters first. And it's 12 points to four. A super run by a super player. What a great attribute. The footwork and the speed of such a big man. Tupo, little second man playing. Just turned him on the inside. Soured miss. Brett Morris was up. Very shallow. Just tucked in behind the, the defensive line of the drag. And Soured should have been his tackle. Bo Scott also there. And Brett Morris beaten quite easily. Not an easy afternoon defend. for defenders on this slightly greasy surface. They're handling the ball okay, okay but quick changes of no, the angle. Ahead. Back in behind a defender to his inside shoulder will be hard to deal with today. Anthony Tupo gets his fourth try of the season, 17 now in his career. A big money deal he signed with the Sharks during the week, but he's back and focused today after being off his game last week. Fitzgibbon from right in front. Reduces the margin to just six midway through the first half. The Dragons lead the Roosters 12 points to six. We go down to the sideline to Andy Raymond. 21 minutes in. First interchange. Kirk Reynoldson is on the field in jersey 11. Off as Jared Safi. Safi suffered a head knock. Just being looked at by the doctors at the moment. A little bit of claret running down the back of the neck. Now, both coaches are going to have to be very wary of interchange today. Boys, it is a very heavy field here at ANZ. The grass hasn't been cut over the last couple of days, so it's long. Also a little bit muddy out there, so the big boys are going to earn their paycheck today. Craig Fitzgibbon. You can see him waiting on. Already muddy as the kickoff goes deep to the dead ball line. And it's O'Mealy who has to take it and bring it back out beyond the 10 for the Roosters. Well, a close call for the Roosters and also for the Dragons. I think Mitchell Pearce had positioned himself to take that kick and quite could have easily given the Roosters a start on halfway. But O'Mealy came from nowhere to pluck the ball out of the sky, tiptoeing along the dead ball line. Get a start for the Swans. The performance like that is a nasty showing it basketball style. Over the top, they didn't fall for the dummy though. And he was wrapped up by Gaznier and also Cray. Kenny Dow working it forward. The Roosters in their sky blue jumper today. The first time they've worn it since 1945. Would you believe when they used to wear this jumper during the Second World War because of an ink shortage? 
dark blue dye problem in the Second World War. Hell, hell, hell. Here they are in this hold, fellas, hold. strip on this most memorable day. Here's Nightingale working it up towards the 40 metre line. Stop there as he goes beyond the 30. You'll play it for Dean Young. Play three in this set from their own end as Reynolds at charges onto a ball who's been pretty solid in his games with the Dragons since leaving the Knights at the end of 2007. Seven straight games for Reynolds to begin the season. And his charges on the left-hand side of the field have been one of the few bright spots for the Dragons so far this season. Oh, poor swung to ground. An awkward moment for him. Mason grabbed a part of him and swung him to ground quickly. Now soured from just outside the 40. Kicking over the head there of Amos Roberts. We will watch it go over the sideline, and the Roosters will have it from their own tent. Yeah, Dean Young again trying to rev up the troops. It's something that the Dragons haven't handled well this year. Jamie Soud, another good kick. Slows things down for the Dragons after the try. Here's the hit by Willie Mason on Port. Just caught him at an awkward angle and swung him around. But the Dragons have tended to drop their heads when things have gone against them. It'll be interesting to see how they handle the next next couple of sets. Right down again, lock in, put your head in the scrum. Head seven scrum, of eight, the Dragons so far completed sets. The Roosters, seven of nine, as they work it up towards the 20 through Soliola. 24 minutes gone. Three tries so far, two to the Dragons, one to the Roosters. Miles it is. He takes it up to be stopped there by Young. Dan Hunt out there also. As Andy Raymond told you a moment ago, here's Miles looking for an offload with that left hand as they on, picked him up, took him off the ground. Solid okay. tackle there by Paul and also Cray. Now Pierce going to the line, taking them on, taken too high though by Dean Young, who says didn't mean anything by it, just an awkward one. Mitchell Pierce acknowledging the concern of the Dragons took it this afternoon. And the Dragons will be under pressure back inside their own half after the. Halfback himself finds the line. Just the right arm there, caught him across the chin. Yeah, Mitchell Pearce going for his first run of the day and just a lazy arm from Dean Young caught him a little bit high. Not much force in it, penalty warranted, but let's move on. Shillington moving on and moving forward, almost dropped the ball on the carry as Pearce barks some instructions on that right-hand edge of the ruck area. Here's Mason going towards him, looking for a run-up. There was no Anthony Minicello. Flashing through the middle, of course. Play that we've seen so many times in the Help career right, of Anthony right, Minicello. He thrives on those situations. Parrot, of course, in the one jumper. As they go through Payer, a short ball for Tupo. A play they used in that part of the field all the way back in round one against the Rabbitohs. It led to a try on that occasion. The Dragons were there to stop him this time. Here's Anasta going to Pierce. Turning it back on the inside for Mason. Beats one defender, not the next, though. Bo Scott stopping him right in front of the post. Last tackle for the Roosters. Brown it is to Anasta. Kicking towards the corner. A chance for Roberts. A good catch, though, made by Nightingale, who was diving back for the field of play, but he didn't have to worry because he was in the in-goal area when he caught it. Yeah, both, both clubs, both teams really got some great athletes in the air. Nightingale scored a, a bag of tries for the Dragons. Saves one there, but Amos Roberts, terrific athlete, great jumper. come on. No wonder both sides have, have aimed plenty of their attack through kicks uh, to their wings. Sean Kenny Dell also a, another that can fly high and pluck the ball out of the sky. He's a great catcher. Here's Cray taking it across the halfway line. Young goes to Hornby. Turns it back on the inside for Justin Porter. Ram it up the middle. He'll play it about 35 metres out from the Roosters line. Hornby again flat when he received the ball, showing it to Morris, who's up there, sniffing around for an offload. Brett, that is, the fullback. Now it goes to Sauer. Kicks back against the flow of the play. Back towards Gasney, who had a play. Yeah, it couldn't come up with it. Stanley could, though. He had visions of getting to the line before he was tackled by Sean Kenny Dow. And now the referee will say there's a knock-on against the Roosters. Oh dear, oh, no, no. Braith and Astor arguing a point. I'd, I'd like to have another look yeah. at that. Yeah. A juggle there by Chase Stanley after the ball was allowed to bounce. Okay. The Roosters standing there. No one calling for the ball. Stanley juggles the ball, flicks it back on the inside. 
The referee is going to say it was a knock-on by Setamata Sar off his right forearm. I guess you could argue that point. You right? Well, I guess you could. It did touch his arm. No doubt about that. No, no, this... You've got blood there anyway. Great head back, mate. That's a tough one. It might well have been against the Roosters. It will put them under pressure no, here, as Craig Fitzgibbon has right, bleeding nose attended to. Just a quick wipe, and he's OK. Right. On, back on. On, just keep Trail by a converted try here. Feet. Lock it in. Hey, arms over, both sides. I'm sure the Dragons here, fans are about to find their Two voice. They go on the in. attack. Two. Hornby, with the feed and the win, goes to sound. They go wide quickly to Josh Morris. Tries to get on the outside of Soliola, who grabbed him by a shirt tail. He only just got a fingernail to him and stopped him about eight metres out from the Roosters' line. Nightingale from dummy half. We'll just bring it back away from the sideline for a settler. Wrapped up there in the tackle off Fitzgibbon and also Shillington. Young comes to Hornby, standing deep this time. He works it to Bo Scott, who tries his luck from close range, but they're there in number to stop him. Tupo, along with Lafini Payer. Young again. Here's Hornby once more. Soward at the back of a decoy run by Gazni, who got tangled up there with Braith and Asta. And they got across the line. We were going upstairs for sure and certain. Here's Brett Morris going for the line. The Roosters catch him high as he dies for the try line. Six more tackles about to come up for the Dragons. Well, late the tackle count two, the fourth tackle. The Dragons would have been looking to kick. Either that play or the next. And they're going to take the two. Interesting call. They'll make it eight points the lead if they can come up with the trial. There it is, the contact from Riley Brown that was penalised by the referee. He flung the left arm out there. There's no risk. He caught Brett Morris around the chin or the neck region. Braith and Astor unhappy, I guess, still about the call of the knock-on against Edamata Sar, which led to the Dragons having possession in the first place. Now, possession just starting to even out a bit. The Roosters completing 9 from 11. The Dragons 9 from 10. So they're keeping errors to a minimum both sides in these slippery conditions. And Sauer could hardly have struck them better to begin the game. A kick from beside the uprights first off to convert the Hornby try and then a tremendous kick from the sideline for... A 12 0 lead off the back of Jason, Night Jason Nightingale's effort from the sideline. Here is another close range one, no mistake with it. And it's 14 points to six. Half an hour gone here on Anzac Day at ANZ Stadium. The Dragons controlling it very nicely. Not making mistakes from their own end. In fact, their completion rate 9 of 10 so far, as opposed to the Roosters, who also are 9 of 11. Good handling on a slippery afternoon from both sides. Yeah, good ball control. The Dragons, important for them to have the next scoring play after the Roosters scored a try. As I said, they have been guilty of dropping their bundles when things have gone against them and making one error turn into two, turn into three, and all of a sudden the game gets away from them. But after a good start, and a couple of tries have extended the lead to eight. The Nasta, having already kicked one over the net ball line, on, Phil, no making sure that he takes a bit off this one. He gets them back underway. The Roosters charge down there in a straight line. A well-drilled unit they are off the kickoff. It comes to Justin Paul to bring it back. 30 straight minutes for the front rower here to begin the game. Orbison is on. James, that is, for Willie Mason as Brad Fittler goes to his bench. They work it very well. Out of dummy half. A good run there by Brett Morris. Four about to come from the field. And now here's Nightingale catching the Roosters offside. Giving away penalties. Really hurting the Roosters at the moment. It just cost them two points with a penalty goal by Jamie Sauer now. They'll find themselves back inside their own end again pretty quickly here. Riley Brown was the man that Sean Hampstead called. He said he was floating, which meant that he wasn't he wasn't close enough to be the second marker. He didn't look too bad on that replay there, but Riley Brown, the man, he said, you're still floating. 
uh, and that's the decision a player has to make. Even if you've called out, if you've called off, if you called offside, you still get involved in the play. Riley Brown did, and the penalty goes the Dragons' way. Here's Paul playing. He'll go from the field now as Young. Goes to Hornby, then Soward on the run around. Back to Soward from Craig. Gasney got a flat ball from the 5-8, and they'll play it just outside the 20. Well, the, the Roosters' defence have marked up pretty well when it has come down this right-hand side to Gasnia. Always had plenty of numbers. Here's Young. Ten metres away from the Roosters' line. Hornby to Soward, who kicks in behind the Nightingale. The kick will be too big, though. The angle was a good one, but there was too much weight on it. He had a play, had the ball stayed inside the touch and goal on as it floated over the head there of Amos Roberts. Yeah, Amos would have been a little bit concerned. He'd come in field. And a couple of metres shorter, that kick would have been perfect. Nightingale was on the outside of Roberts. But again, you don't like to see Jamie Soud kick the ball too much. His kicking game's been fantastic so far. Every now and then, he's playing too wide. You'd like to see when there is a, quite a gap between the defenders of him actually running the ball. The opportunity was there. The Roosters lucky to get away with one there. Lapini Payer dumping the ball out the back, and luckily for them, it worked out OK. Mason gets a breather after half an hour. James Orbison is out there for him. Lonnie Brown has stayed on the field. Orbison is now the dummy half, and Brown will go back into a back rowers role as Mitchell Pearce goes to the left-hand side of the field. I'll play it here, 25 away from the Dragons line. Orbison goes back to Pearce now. He'll hoist it high in the air again, hoping for it to come down in the field of play. A nice kick, not handled by Nightingale. It comes up to Shillington, who dives across, but was there, interference there on Nightingale as the Roosters came through to contest the ball. Well, we'll have a look at the, the onside from the kick first. And I thought, just watching it live, that Roberts might have been offside. No, he's not. So that'll be all right. And we'll go to the contest at the try line. Nightingale stands his ground. Roberts really didn't... He wasn't attempting to catch the ball there. He's pushed the player. It'll be a simple call for the video referee, Phil Curley, but there did seem to be some early contact watching it live, confirmed as we saw the replay there. Roberts coming through, not playing at the ball, getting there to make contact with Nightingale. And David Chillington having a dislocated finger attended to. One look, all the video referee needs, he says, no try. It was a good kick off David Chillington. I don't fancy being him at the moment. No, it's not the it's not the nicest thing here. Amos Roberts, and, and really, the same result would have come about if Amos Roberts just put his hands up in the air and tried to catch the ball. He still would have made contact with Nightingale, who wouldn't have caught it, and we would have, we would have had a ball on the ground for some of the Roosters. That was Amos Roberts, who gets so many kicks thrown up to him, should know better. But just play at the ball, even if you're not trying to catch it. Make it look like you're trying to catch it, and it's very hard to rule against you. Did a bad job of selling it, that's for sure. It's a simple call for the video referee. Stuart Webb is out there for the Dragons now. He brings it up towards the halfway line. This could be the lock forward to start the game, but starting off the bench is Nightingale. Dumps the ball out the back. They pick it up and give it to Riles, who dumps it forward towards Fitzgibbon and also Shillington. His finger and some quick attention from Dr. John Orchard. He's okay to continue on. Dan Hunt playing it here in the tackle of Riley Brown. Soward chip it towards the in goal area once again. More pressure here coming up on Sam Pirrot. He digs in for the field of play. They'll drag him back to the in goal area though. They're doing all the simple things very well this afternoon. St. George Illawarra. Another good kick by Jamie Soward and an enthusiastic chase. We'll earn them six more tackles. Yeah, it's not easy to hit the ground from that sort of distance. Has to be a real delicate little kick. No good if you're finding the Roosters players on the full. And great defence there. Morris leading the charge. Reynoldson also involved. He was always going to be something of an odds against chance to bring it back into the field of play and stay there, Sam Perrett. He knew the urgency of the situation. Terrific muscle. 
and defence by the Dragons. Hunt it is. We'll bring it back off the Anasta goal line dropout. He brings it back almost to the 30 metre line. Dean Young at dummy half will come to Soward as they stack the right hand side of the field here. Bo Scott can change the angle, getting back in behind the play. The ball gives an offload away to Dean Young. He comes to Hornby. They're off and running on the left hand side now for the Reynolds. Stopped there by Fitzgibbon and also Mitchell Pierce. They keep it going the same way. Soward goes to Josh Morris. Tackled there by Solviola. We've got some help from James Orbison. He's just five metres out. Looking to extend this lead of 14-6. Here's Riles going to Webb. He runs a fair distance as well before getting to Anasta and also Tupo. There's a chance on this right-hand side now. Young. Quick ball to Gaznia. Touched and knocked down by Sean Kenny down. A chance for Bo Scott to get across the line. Still pushing for it. They'll stop him a couple of metres out. Another set of six for the Dragons from close range. Here's Soward. He goes past Reynolds and gives it to Josh Morris who goes the line and gets across as well. That's the Josh Morris we saw in 2007. It is all the Dragons. And they lead 18 points to six. Terrific play. Great attacking football on either side of the field. Yeah, first Gaznia down the right-hand side. They got six to go. And then very quickly set up on the left. Two quick passes from Hornby, Soward, and Morris on the outside of Sia Soliola. And he's showing great strength today, hasn't he? Josh Morris just bursting through the tackle. Roberts just not able to hold him up. And Josh Morris gets the Dragons' third try. And as you said, that is the sort of form we saw from Morris in 2007. He's had a scratchy start to 2008. In fact, and, and only this week signed a three-year deal with the Bulldogs. It's an afternoon for players who are going to new clubs in 2009 to score tries here today. Anthony Tupo for the Roosters. Their lone try scorer so far in this first half. There he is looking fatigued behind the goal line of the Roosters. And I'll barely have time to come back and get the ball back in play here. And Soward can make it 20 points to six. Quite an amazing scoreline given the form line of both teams coming into this game. Soward has already converted one from the sideline. This one will stay out to the left-hand side, but they lead once again by an even dozen. It's 18-6 with a minute left. Well, we, we did say that form generally goes out the window. And here they are with their set up to the left. Two long balls and two good balls. Josh Morris just good enough to get on the outside of Soliola. Form goes out the window in these Anzac Day clashes. Uh, the Dragons struggling, but they're taking it to the Roosters who find themselves in an unusual position where they've led at halftime in every one of their games so far this season. In fact, you have to go back to round 24. 2007, the second last round of the regular season last year Dominant to extend that leading at halftime streak of the Roosters. It will change here today, though. It will end in round seven on Anzac Day. The Dragons, an enormous chance of going ahead 4-3 in the Anzac Day series since the turn of the century between these two sides. Gaznia will play it as the siren sounds. They have to play on. Here's Brett Morris, he'll take it forward, that'll do it. 40 minutes gone on Anzac Day here at ANZ Stadium. And it's the Dragons who lead the Roosters 18 points to six. A terrific half of football from them. They've shaken off all the drama of recent times to show what they really can do in 2008 here today. We will take a break and come back to look at the first half highlights in just a moment. Make sure you stay with us.